You are listening to Impact Online, brought to you by 8482 Media. My name is Eli, the founder of 8482, and I've been creating content and digital education for businesses since 2016. We've generated millions of views, subscribers, and dollars for clients. This show will explain best practices, strategies, and lessons learned from content creators to help you achieve an impact online. If you enjoy this show and want to help it succeed, you can leave a five-star rating. It will help grow the show so that we can dedicate more time and resources to bringing on the right people and collecting the most valuable information to help you stand out in an online world. Today's date is July 24th, 2022. Just got back from doing a drone footage shoot down the coast here in California. Got a long day ahead of me in terms of producing podcasts for clients as well as finishing up some online programs which made me inspired to give this um, this product away for free for anyone listening to this show today. So how to launch your first digital product in five steps with five skills. A handful of people have already purchased it. Um, so if you are one of those people and you're listening, just go ahead and reach out you know, to the YouTube channel, 8042 Media, or to our email, 8042media at gmail.com. Or through the website, you can drop a comment on the review section on this product and we'll get you your money back if you feel that you would like to get your money back since you purchased it on Audible. Uh, The majority of people have purchased this from Audible. So without further ado, we're going to get into this product, how to launch your first digital product in five steps with five skills. I am going to be playing this uh, here in a second just from start to finish. And if you do enjoy it or have any questions, uh, you can reach out to us again on YouTube, 8482 Media. That is the name of the channel. You can also check out our website, 8042media.com. And if you get value from this free uh, product that I'm going to be giving out here and playing, you can support us by downloading a copy. You can have a complete downloadable copy if you want to review it at any time. Um, But there's no need for that really to to purchase that from the website because you can just come back and listen to this episode. I plan to leave it up forever. And you could also support us if you'd like to get a downloadable copy in a PDF format. If you want to review it, you can go to Amazon or you can just download one from our website. But again, this is completely free. So sit back, relax and enjoy. I've contributed to the launch of over 25 digital products, workout programs, education, and e-learning courses. Since launching my first ever digital product in 2018, my views and approach has completely changed. The time it takes me to launch a product today is at least 10 times faster than when I started. In fact, my approach towards launching online digital products now is the complete opposite of what it was then. I got into this industry because I believed in the power of digital education. I've always found value in digital content and I will always love YouTube videos, online courses, and podcasts. A pretty successful dude that flies rockets into space says, you don't need a formal education. Everything is available online for free. Although I think that that's true, It doesn't explain the fact that the global e-learning market was over 170 billion in 2019 and is expected to grow over 10% by 2025. All the education, all the knowledge that you would want is out there for free, but people are making billions selling online education. So the job of content creators and course creators are obviously different. The job of a content creator in the 21st century is to compete for attention, for users' attention, by answering specific questions, motivating or entertaining and inspiring people. But your job as a digital product creator who's generating revenue is gonna be slightly different. It's about cohesively solving a pain point for a consumer that content creators haven't been able to solve with a single piece of content. If you can do that successfully, you will own a piece of a growing multi-billion dollar industry. The goal of this whole product is to save you time, to save you money, and to get you a stake in that growing industry as fast as possible. So after listening to this blueprint, 
you're going to understand the five skills that you need to master and the five steps that you're going to need to take. Remember, simple wins with digital products. I've tried to simplify this as much as I possibly can, and I hope you enjoy it. Best of luck. Skill number one, content production. So in this section, I want to break down uh, the different types of content production and provide you with some ideas and some websites to go to, depending on whether your content is going to be written content, audio content, or video content. There's a lot of different components to the online education space, and you can create a lot of different styles of products. So what I want to leave you with and what I want you to think about while you're listening to this section is what is going to serve your company, your business, or your education best? Is it going to be written content? Is it going to be audio content? Or is it going to be video content? You need content. When planning a digital product, focus on selling your strengths. If you're a great writer, consider selling digital documents, packages, blueprints, guides, cheat sheets, ebooks, or booklets. Or do it all. You can sell all of those. These are all fancy names for written words, but packaging them with these labels has been shown to bring in more revenue than selling just words. So just start writing, and when you're done, hire a cheap freelancer to turn what you've written into a beautiful document that can be packaged and sold. Sites I recommend to find cheap freelancers include Fiverr.com, Upwork.com, OnlineJobs.ph, Freelancer.com, and Toptal.com. So I usually recommend written content to a lot of clients who don't like to be on camera or who aren't good at recording audio or video content. If you're the kind of person who likes to sit down and just write for long periods of time, or you're a great writer, consider creating blueprints, guides, cheat sheets, ebooks, booklets. That would be my recommendation to anybody who excels in written content. The next type of content I'm going to talk a little bit about is audio content. You can, of course, create a podcast. You can create an audio book. Audio content can be, again, packaged and sold in many different ways. So if you don't want to be on camera, if you're not a good writer, but you have the ability to record audio content and sell it, I'm going to provide you with a few recommendations on how to get started, which microphones to choose, and the key points when it comes to you know creating audio content that people are actually going to want to listen to. Audio content. If your voice sounds anything like David Attenborough or Morgan Freeman, I'd recommend audio products. You could reach out to authors who have yet to create audiobooks and partner with them. Bring their book to Audible. That sounds like a pretty cool job. Record and package custom speeches, quotes, or daily educational content specific to your niche and or service. If you want to just get some reps in, you could sign up for an account on Fiverr and start making money recording voiceovers before you start selling your own digital products. Quality mics for capturing audio on a budget aren't as important as producing the audio in an audio software like Adobe Audition. So I want to take a break here because a lot of people and audio engineers would argue with me on this one. Um, What I mean is if you don't have the money to invest in a $300 microphone or a $1,000 microphone, you don't need to to get started. That shouldn't hold you back. That's what I'm trying to say here. Uh, If you can get your audio edited, if you can get it produced, if you learn the basics, even just by going on YouTube and looking at Adobe Audition, you will be able to take audio from a $50 lavalier mic, for example, that you can buy at Best Buy, or even from recording you know, audio off your phone, and you can make it sound good enough. That's what I'm trying to drive home. Don't feel bad purchasing a cheap mic or even recording audio into your phone from a quiet room as long as you again Find a cheap freelancer who can touch it up and make it sound pro. Once revenue is coming in from your product and you are profitable, then that justifies, in my mind, investing in a quality microphone. For a nice lavalier mic, I recommend the Sennheiser AVX ME2. I think that will run you about $600 to $800. And for a podcast or stationary mic, I recommend a Shure XLR microphone. Uh, There are quite a few Shure microphones. Um, They're going to be in about the $300 price point, but 
I'm recording off of one of those currently, and that's what a lot of uh, successful podcasts and audiobooks are using, including you know Joe Rogan, Impulsive, and quite a few top 1% podcasts. That brings us to video content. The last form of content we're gonna cover is video. This is what my company specializes in and is by far the most valuable and expected in the world of digital products. Now I wanna press pause here. I'm not just saying that because I do video. The reason I got into video is because I understood this and saw this and saw video as the most important. It's important to recognize that video is a high income skill set. If you don't have any existing experience creating video content, it will be an investment to hire someone who actually knows what they're doing. Avoid the cheap videographers and editors until you actually have the budget to work with someone who's good. I've been a videographer, I've been in this space for a long time, and a lot of people overcharge and don't provide quality service. So either find a friend or you yourself can step in, but I'd recommend being careful with going out and spending tens of thousands of dollars working with a production team or a company unless it's the right person. I'd recommend filming videos just on your phone or purchasing a cheap wireless mic that plugs into your phone jack so you can slightly improve the audio quality. If you are gonna film off your phone, the video quality usually looks great. Most phones now shoot in 4K. The challenge and why I'm bringing this up is you're going to need to increase the audio quality. Hop on Amazon and again, look for one of those microphones, a lavalier microphone, wireless ideally, so you can plug a receiver into your phone jack, you can actually put on and wear a microphone and you can film you know, videos from a whiteboard or a green screen or a set and the video will match the level of audio quality in that case. You don't need fancy titles or an intro to get started. It's just important at the end of the day to stay profitable with online products. Once you generate your first $10,000 in sales, now you're ready to hire a videographer to improve your course quality. At the end of the day, information is what you're selling, not 4K videos. And I wanna drive this point home because a lot of people uh, don't think that they're ready. It's almost a level of insecurity in their mind. They don't think they're ready to share. They don't think they're ready to teach or to justify making income through creating products. So they try to justify it by producing high quality videos and spending a lot of money in terms of production. And now they're negative 10,000 in expenses before they even create a sale. The reason I'm bringing this up is I don't want that to be you. If you're even listening to this, chances are you are prepared enough, you are good enough, you are ready. Don't let insecurity make you go into debt trying to make the product great. That being said, I wanna give you a little insider secret in terms of how to get a talented videographer on your team. Videographers are looking to escape that client treadmill and you can take advantage of that. A great strategy I'd recommend is reaching out to a videographer with experience who's good and offer them equity in your product. There's not a lot of projects that um, talented videographers can actually get equity in. They might produce the entire project for free with you know, five to 10% equity in the total sales. So now what you can get out of that is an incredible high quality product you don't have to worry about setting up the cameras or editing, and you can reduce immediate costs for production. If you're not sure how to locate or contact a videographer, you can just Google, see if there's any in your area, or most of them, since they're very visual, are on platforms like Instagram. So you can search hashtag videographer in your location or your area, and chances are you'll see a variety of profiles. Find the one that you, know, you resonate with, and reach out to them. As you will learn as we go through this blueprint, getting a talented videographer on your team will make all the difference when it comes to advertising your course to cold traffic. You can create the product as I recommend you do, but if you find yourself stuck after creating it and you're in this process of trying to generate sales and not looking attractive enough or not looking sexy enough to an outside audience that doesn't know you, well, that's where, you know, paying for advertising, paying for a talented videographer, 
that's where there is value immediately off the bat if you do run into those initial problems. So getting one involved from the start can help you tremendously. I wanna talk about ads for a second. I often laugh when I see these video ads pop up on my feed from gurus attempting to convince me to buy their copywriting course. And usually it sounds something like, copywriting is the number one skill set that drives sales. You need to learn this and this and this. If copywriting was more effective than video, they wouldn't be using a video ad. In my mind, proof that video is the most relevant marketing tool for the modern day is just in plain sight. If you're interested in learning video editing for yourself so that you can reduce the costs of working with a video editor or hiring a videographer, I'd recommend starting with Adobe Premiere Pro and purchasing a Sony A-series camera. Now there's quite a few of them, just get whichever one is in your budget. They're all gonna shoot quality video and you'll be able to learn and grow with that camera. I've shot off countless cameras and used a variety of editing softwares, so trust my judgment if you wanna save yourself some time and just get started off on the right track. If you don't wanna shoot your own video content, stock footage is also a reliable way to improve your videos or ads and generate new leads into your business or product. Provided that you take some time to learn the basics in Premiere Pro, stock footage sites to download footage from include motionarray.com, videohive.net, storyblocks.com, and artgrid.io. So on a quick side note, as many of you know, uh, meme culture is dominating the battle for human culture. If you wanna rip any online image or video clip from YouTube or any other site, for example, and add that into your course products or video ads, you can simply copy and paste a URL into clipconverter.com or a variety of online downloaders uh, to immediately download and start editing or including that footage in your video ad or course. Skill number two, virtual speaking. Talking into a voice recorder or camera can feel much different than public speaking or even talking to a friend. It's just important to prepare for this and spend some time developing that skill. The barrier, the main barrier is just remembering that there's one person on the other side of the camera that you're talking to. After filming thousands of videos, here's the most common mistake I've seen. Course creators, they're not aware that they're just talking to one person and trying to connect with one person, help that one person understand the topic. They might think there could be 10, 100, 1,000, 100,000, a million people that buy this product and they're trying to talk to the masses. So the biggest mistake is trying to talk to the masses with your product or your course, your video course, and not just focusing on trying to help one person with whatever problem they're dealing with. Talking to a camera is not about being liked by a stadium full of people. It's about connecting to one person who purchased your course. A trick to get started is just print out a picture. It could be of a friend that you're actually cool with that you can talk to about anything when you're yourself. It could be a client or a family member. Take that photo and place it next to the camera or place it close to the microphone that you're recording out of and speak to the camera just as you would to that person. And everyone consuming your product is gonna thank you for not sounding like just a robot. You're gonna sound like a normal person who simply cares about them. And the other thing is it's okay to mess up. If you say um, or you say but, or you say this, the first thought you have in your mind is, oh my God, we need to edit that out. We need to get this out of the product. It shouldn't live here. Products are professional. People are paying money for this. You're right and you're wrong. You can create the perfect product if you wanna create the perfect product and that's your mission, go for it. It's not gonna crush your business if you say um, or you say and, or you mess up and correct yourself. Uh, those are micro mistakes. And although there, there might be a lot of pressure on your shoulders to, to make a perfect product, if I say um, or correct myself in this audiobook, you aren't gonna kill me, you know? And, and the reason being is People make mistakes and it's okay to be human. And if you're the instructor and you've gone a far way, you've learned something, you've developed a skill set to the point where you can monetize it, you can make money off of it, and you can teach it to other people, and you still mess up, 
that's a very relatable position at the end of the hero's journey to be in. And people going through listening to your product or purchasing your product and watching you on video are going to relate and are going to think, well, it's entirely possible. You know, that can be me. And I hope that just even hearing that, listening to this product inspires you to not need to bring a level of perfectionism into everything you do when you're putting out your own. Paralysis by analysis is real, especially if you're editing or producing your own content. Remember, getting your product to market is the only way to know if it's good or not. I wrote here, read it again and tattoo it on the inside of your brain. So I guess it's pretty important. Getting your product to market is the only way to know if it's good or not. As the course creator, you are the only person in the world who can't buy your own product. And I don't think people think about this a lot. You're the only person in the world that can't buy your own thing. So your opinion and self-criticism on the details of how your hair looks or the way your voice sounds matters less than everybody else's opinion in the entire world when it comes to generating sales. Just let that sink in. Your opinion is the least important when it comes to generating revenue. So the less amount of self-criticism that you can bring into your project, the better. Get it to market and test if it's good or not. Get over perfectionism. Go change the world and make some money in the process. Skill numero trace. Website design. So first off, you don't need to be Steve Jobs or know how to code Python or JavaScript to add this skill set to your arsenal. I've worked with a lot of clients and they all say, oh, no, 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 I don't do website. I can't do it. I don't build websites. I, I need a guy for that. That doesn't need to be you. Popular hosting platforms include ClickFunnels, Kartra, WordPress, Udemy, Wix, and Kajabi. These platforms make it easy to drag and drop videos, add titles, and build out your course. A 12-year-old could do it. That being said, someone needs to do it. That might be you, that might not be you, but adding the basics of website design is going to be essential if you want to get to that next level. You don't want to be dependent or reliant on your designer or your team member to create the product. At the end of the day, if something's not working, it's your fault and you need to be able to fix that. And that's why I've included website design or being able to understand the back end of your hosting platforms as an essential skill, as skill number three within this blueprint. Being able to sell and market the course will include either having a pre-existing website or using a platform to upload your digital content to and distribute it for sale. Depending on the product you're choosing to sell, you may need to consistently test various landing pages, create a variety of sales funnels, or split test various sales pages. For some of you, what I just said might make complete sense. Uh, but if any of these terms seem foreign to you, just do some research. Uh, write down what doesn't make sense. Do the initial research and become inspired to learn about this stuff. The first client I ever had the pleasure of co-creating an online product for was a kettlebell world champion. This guy was a beast. He can literally take 140 pounds and clean and jerk kettlebells over his head for 10 minutes straight. Uh, he's a beast. The guy could do anything he puts his mind to. And we were building out a course for personal trainers who were interested in learning the details of how to safely and effectively lift kettlebells. He shared with me that his dream was to generate over 80% of his annual revenue from online program sales. Yet he didn't have experience with creating sales funnels. Uh, he wasn't a master website designer. He didn't know anything about video, but he could lift kettlebells. I actually asked him this. I said, would it be possible to become a kettlebell world champion without lifting a kettlebell? And it kind of clicked in that moment, I think, for both of us. And the answer was no, of course not. If you only train with barbells, you're not going to be a kettlebell world champion, even if you can, you know, squat a thousand pounds. If you want to be a world champion in any sport, you need to get good at that sport. And every sport has skills. If you want to master the art of creating and selling digital products, you want to be able to launch them quickly and create a lot of them, you need to get good at the five skills included in this blueprint. After mastering those skills, you'll be at a high level. Maybe not a world championship level until you've sold a lot of products, but you'll be at a high level. Then, all you have to do is develop the right strategy 
and follow the right program for winning the world championships. I've provided that strategy and program for you in the form of the essential five steps. But first, we have two more skills to master. Skill number four, sales copy. So I made a point earlier about quality video being more valuable in my opinion than the ability to write high converting sales copy. And that's gonna be controversial. A lot of people are gonna argue with me on that. If you don't have a video on your landing page, well, sales copy is going to be a lot more important. If your primary uh, form of lead generation is through video ads, well, video is going to be a lot more important. But it's essentially storytelling. It doesn't matter if you're writing or recording a video. The truth is, though, that everyone can write. I mean, most people can write. It's a skill taught in school, so we have access to it in our back pocket. But the knowledge gap that I think is greater is with video. That's why I recommend that you learn it. The combination of both, in my mind, is the gold standard. If you can create high converting sales copy and you have the ability to edit, produce um, high quality video, well, I think you're gonna be pretty much unstoppable in this space. I recently wrote the sales copy for a funnel for an Olympian and Hall of Fame coach looking to sell custom wrestling equipment. If you understand the framework for writing good sales copy, you'll be able to sell anything and create better storylines for your video content. There are plenty of resources that are going to go way deeper than I can possibly go when it comes to writing sales copy. I've read all the books that I'm about to tell you about, and I don't think I can compete with regard to doing a better job of explaining how you can pick up these skills. So I recommend you read the following books. One. Cash Vertising by Drew Eric Whitman. Number two, The Copywriter's Handbook by Robert Bly. Number three, Content Marketing by Daniel H U T Y is his last name. Um, H U T Y. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Number four, The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath. Number five, The Boren Letters by Gary Halbert. Number six, This Is Marketing by Seth Godin. Number seven, Hey Whipple, Squeeze This by Luke Sullivan. Number eight, Creating Fat Content. I like that title by Andy Williams. Number nine, Building a Story Brand. I've read that book a couple times. Um, keep going back to it. It's a great one, especially if you are uh, building a business from scratch and you need to create the website, you need to create the products, the whole deal. That's by Donald Miller. And number 10, Content Rules by Anne Handley. Skill number five, ads. If you've got millions of followers and an audience of paying customers, chances are you're still going to want to focus efforts on running ads. Running ads can be very strategic and it's more specific on where you're starting out. If you're starting out with absolutely nothing, you're trying to run ads to gain some leverage, to gain some momentum. If you've got millions of followers, uh, you're running ads to gain a new audience. Running ads goes very, very deep. So I'm going to do my best to give you a general overview within this section. I've got the inside report on a variety of successful companies delegating huge ad budgets towards YouTube and Facebook ads. At the time of writing this, Organifi Supplements spends almost more than any company worldwide on YouTube ads. Now, this section, I'm going to be going into a general overview of um, where I think you should start. Now, if you're going to remember one thing, it's to just pick, you know, one platform or one form of advertising to start your research on and dive deep into that. Um, I had the pleasure of mentoring under Jaden Gross and working beside him. I've had the ability to, of course, meet and um, work not directly with the founder of Organifi, Drew Canoli, but with some associates. I actually ran into him uh, shooting at his house. I didn't know I was filming at his house, but he happened to walk out, introduce himself. And the day before that, I had been studying Russell Brunson's uh, presentation where he sold over $3 million of ClickFunnels-based services uh, live on stage. I believe it was at the 10X Growth Conference with Grant Cardone. And he used Drew Canoli and Organifi as his case study for how ClickFunnels can change a company. 
focus on one platform, understand that platform, test that platform before moving on. Ads is going to be very highly specific. And if you just want to run ads over every single platform everywhere, you're probably going to lose all your money in my experience. There is still an incredible opportunity for small and large brands to enter the world of paid advertising. Without getting too deep into advertising, the recommendations I can make are to test different sales copy and creatives for Facebook ads, experiment running YouTube ads that target channels and specific videos within your niche, and run ads on Google when common keywords are searched relating to your product. There's a lot to unpack there. I'm going to try to do it briefly. Facebook, YouTube, and Google. Facebook has a lot of data and everything that I've experimented with points towards their algorithm knowing best. What you can change is your copy and your creative. So if you're going to experiment with Facebook ads, try split testing, try split testing, different copy and different creative. YouTube. YouTube is different because YouTube allows you to pinpoint where you're going to advertise on specific videos or specific channels. Google advertising is great for showing up at the top. If you search anything on Google, chances are you're going to see two to three search results based on um, what shows up through Google ads. You'll see a little ad icon right before you are going to be able to click the link or read the title of that Google search. Amazon poured majority of their revenue into Google ads early on, and we all know how it turned out for them. An additional form of advertising that most course creators aren't really thinking about that I want to bring up is podcast advertising. Although Facebook, YouTube, and Google have been the main rocks for large brand awareness campaigns and lead generation, podcast advertising is arguably more lucrative. Think about the trust factor for a second. People who listen to a podcast listen for hours, and they often trust the host's recommendations and keep coming back to their show. Sure, Advertising on the top podcasts in the world might not be realistic for you to launch your course. They can charge anywhere from five to $10,000 for a simple ad on their podcast. But finding all the podcasts in your niche and starting a conversation about advertising your product on their show for a commission in sales is a great strategy to gain some exposure off the bat as long as you're providing a quality course and product. So I'm going to take a break and just give you a quick example of how I would do this. The second I launch a course or a product, I would be thinking about making a list of all the top podcasts in my niche that are under 10,000 downloads. So to summarize, advertising will be dependent on your niche and specific to your course or product. If you explore Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google search ads, podcast ads, Instagram ads through Facebook, app-based ads through Facebook, Snapchat ads, and IGTV ads, again, through Facebook, you're going to be ahead of most, if not all, course creators. So look into those things, have them in the back pocket. I recommend choosing one form of advertising and starting with that. Remember, ads will get you exposure, but email marketing and following up with new leads will be the primary driving force for continuous revenue. On average, a potential customer has to see your product over nine times before making a purchase, unless, of course, you catch them emotionally distraught and solve their problem above the fold. Step one, distribution. So believe it or not, the first step is not creating content for your course. If you do that, you will have all this awesome content and not know what to do with it or how to sell it. I'll tell you right now that 99% of everyone I've ever worked with does not follow these five steps in the right order. To be honest, you're probably not going to either first time around. After creating 25 plus video products for various clients, I can promise you this, so please listen. If you focus on distribution first, you're going to generate more revenue and be able to bring your product to market much faster. For example, before launching my next online program, I will have the advertising campaigns planned out. I will have the hosting websites built out. I will have my sales copy written for the landing pages. I will have all of that mapped out. I'm going to have a backup plan mapped out with video advertisements and podcast or YouTube production if I don't generate sales immediately. That's what you need to do off the bat. Step number one is to picture your product complete and ready for launch. 
Now, do everything in your power to generate and create all the systems, the funnels, the sales copy, the images, the videos, everything you need to sell the exact amount of copies you want to. I hope this inspires you to just write out your plan for distribution and additionally prepare a backup plan. Then you're ready to move on to step two. Step number two, hosting. Depending on your content, you need to find the right hosting platform. You can upload your content to Udemy or Skillshare and let their websites generate traffic for you. If you are an expert or want more customization over your pricing or layout, consider custom building your hosting platform. I've done this multiple times on WordPress or a similar customizable website platform. I've worked with a variety of video course distributors who have used both Kajabi and or ClickFunnels to launch and sell seven-figure courses. I've also built out courses on Kartra, which is a new online product and sales platform that works great for creating multiple products and upselling, downselling, and cross-selling. The options are unlimited, but the most important two words you can remember are profit first. That's actually a great book, Profit First, if you haven't read it. So don't spend more than you're making. A lot of these softwares are gonna charge $100 a month. If you're not gonna be profitable, you're not ready to use them. Start with a free site or even branding a PDF or linking videos off a Google Doc and building sales pages off a close to free website platform like Wix. As you grow into a massive success, you can upgrade to more high-end hosting platforms like HubSpot, which costs a shit ton of cash. It's important to note, usually what you are paying for is data. What does that mean? The more expensive the platform, the more data or information on your websites of visitors and customers you can gather. The most important recommendation I can give you is to start. Most of these platforms have a free trial, so take advantage of that, sign up, build out your course. If you like the way it looks, go for it. If not, just get your money back and keep browsing. Think of this process as just doing reps in the gym. Hopefully you go to the gym. It doesn't matter which 20 pound dumbbell you pick up as long as you're doing reps. Once you've done your research and picked the platform you wanna use for hosting your product, it's time to set goals and then create your course outline. Step number three, goals. This section I'm gonna be really quick with, but it's just important to get real clear and honest on your goals for creating your first product. If you wanna generate revenue, Focus less on quality of content and designate a larger budget towards developing front-end value, content, and advertising budgets. If your goal is to get return customers or improve retention, focus more on quality of content and back-end value and have your small, loyal audience do the marketing for you. I want to give you two quick examples of this. So what I'm talking about is if you want to generate revenue, Spending two years developing a product is not going to contribute to that at all. What is going to contribute to that is getting a good course that solves a sexy problem that people deal with a lot out and ready to sell and taking more and more of your time on upfront deliverables like YouTube videos pointing to that, podcasts pointing to that, creating advertising that points to that. Spend as short a period of time developing the product and focus more energy on front-end content and selling. If the goal of your course is to create a loyal base of customers that know that your products are better than anything else in the market so that they keep coming back and buying your future products, then it's a good idea to focus on quality. You don't want a single person to buy your course and not be blown away. Focus all your efforts on quality you might sacrifice a lot of revenue, but if that's the long-term model for growing the business that you dream of, then do that. These are just some examples, but your strategy will be dependent on your goals. It's extremely important to be honest with yourself. Wanting a course that's high quality, high profit, high scalability, high retention is nearly impossible. It's possible, but it's very rare. Set your goals for what aligns with your core values and move forward strategically with speed. If you want a highly profitable course and you're starting from scratch, sacrifice quality. Get your course to market and create high value, high quality front end content and advertising. Step number four, outline. Before you write anything, shoot a single video or record any audio, please create an outline. 
Best-selling authors have a plan and cohesive outline for a book before they even write it, especially the second time around. Professional bodybuilders have a meal plan and workout plan going into competition for months. Cage fighters have a vision of every possible outcome in a fight. They even hire mental coaches to help them prepare. It's important to attack your project with relentless confidence, but the outline is essential. When it comes to outlining your content, a minimum requirement is to have a list of all included deliverables, names, talking points, and estimated time requirements for each piece of content. A great test to see how prepared your outline is will be to build out your entire backend hosting platform before you shoot a single piece of content. Now, this example is specifically for video online courses, but you should be able to drag and drop all video placeholders, add all content titles and summaries and save shooting or producing any content as your last step. Extra credit would be to include any advertising materials or email marketing campaigns into your outline. That way you can film or write all the course material and marketing material together. One of the most common errors I see with unprepared course outlines is to shoot and produce the content only later realizing that you have no actual marketing materials, so you need to create another shoot, you need to create more content before you can even gain some traction. Generating a solid outline before moving to the final step will save you both time and money. Step number five, content. Your job is to finish where most people start with creating the content. At this point, it should be easy and exciting to create the content. By this point, you should have mastered the five skill sets necessary for being a world champion course creator, production, virtual speaking, ads, sales copy, and website design. In addition, you have a plan for distribution, hosting, an outline, and clear, specific goals. Most clients I consult are frustrated, unprepared, and unaware of how poor the content they shoot for their course is. Why? Because they don't follow these steps. I'm excited for you to put everything included in this blueprint to the test and launch your first digital product. While starting my entrepreneurial journey, the most frustrating aspect of purchasing educational products was that they were not specific to the problems I was dealing with. Although I've done my best to create a formula that is inclusive to a variety of products across various niches, if you would like my personal dedicated time on your product, follow the 8042 Media YouTube channel and leave any of your comments and questions there. Thank you for listening. The end. Thanks for listening to How to Launch Your First Digital Product in 5 Steps with 5 Skills. For more information, check out 8482media.com. As always, thank you for your time and attention. This show would not be possible without the support, ideas, and growing community of data-driven creators that make creating content a fun and competitive way to earn a living. Best of luck to you and your business. I hope you achieve all the fame and success that you wish for while you're here. Dozo.